Hey everyone, welcome back to Tired Old Queen at the Movies. Steve's got something fun for us this week that I know you're gonna love. Let's go see him. Johnny! Tired Old Queen at the Movies. Ooh, Johnny, we hadn't done a film noir in a while, so I decided to do one of my favorites from 1946, Howard Hawks' classic, The Big Sleep, starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall. Now, this is based on a novel by Raymond Chandler, and the same year that they shot this movie, uh, they shot Double Indemnity. And they, <laughs> Double Indemnity was actually, was a James M. Cain thing, but it had a screenplay by Raymond Chandler, but in Hollywood they never go to the actual writers, so instead of getting Raymond Chandler to write the big sleep, they got William Faulkner. Working on a cipher, huh? Just fooling around. Chandler's novels, he came out of the pulp uh, magazines of the 30s, and they were always about this downtrodden detective named Philip Marlowe. It was a perfect part for Humphrey Bogart. And Marlowe is very kind of world-weary. Later on, he was played by Robert Mitchum, who did a, a really great job in the 70s, although he was a little old by that time. But Bogart was right on the money, and he had, was madly in love with Lauren Bacall, and he was helping her along through this movie. So you're a private detective? I didn't know they existed except in books, or else they were greasy little men snooping around hotel corridors. Ah, oh, you're a mess, aren't you? And it basically concerns his being hired by this General Sternwood, a very, very wealthy man, to pay off a blackmailer who's blackmailing him over his youngest daughter, Carmen. He has two daughters, the other one being Mrs. Rutledge, played by Lauren Bacall. Now, Carmen is an nymphomaniac. And this movie is so great with the little references. The first time you see Carmen Sternwood, uh, Bogart comes in, he's waiting to be ushered into General Sternwood, and he's standing there, and this hot, hot chick comes down the stairs with these little shorty shorts, Martha Vickers. And she's got her thumb in her mouth. And she says, You're not very tall, are you? You know, <laughs> it's so sexual. And he goes, Well, I try to be. You know, <laughs> not bad. Probably not. And she does a few more innuendos and she walks over and falls in his lap and then gets up and kind of staggers away. And Bogart looks at the butler and says, Who's that? Well, that's a General Sternwood's youngest daughter, Carmen. You ought to wean her. She's old enough. And they, <laughs> and they meet General Sternwood. Now, it turns out that Carmen has been involved in a little uh, pornography thing. Now, they never actually use the word pornography, but she's been having her picture taken in sort of um, compromising situations all over town. And this guy named Geiger is trying to blackmail him. I guess you want me to take this Geiger off your back, is that right? Yes. Want to know anything or just get rid of him? I just want to get rid of him. He goes to this bookstore to investigate this guy, Geiger, who's blackmailing Carmen, and he meets Dorothy Malone. Dorothy Malone, at this point, was really early in her career, and Howard Hawks loved her when she auditioned to play the sister. She didn't get it, but he put this scene in specifically just for her, and she's so wonderful. Geiger's in his early 40s, medium height, fattish, soft all over, Charlie Chan mustache, well-dressed, Wears a black hat, affects the knowledge of antiques and hasn't any, and, oh yes, I think his left eye is glass. He says, you should have been a detective. She goes, thanks. <laughs> and they end up spending the afternoon. He says, well, I'm, you know, she says, it's getting pretty rainy outside. He says, well, I happen to have a bottle of bourbon in my back pocket. She goes, well. Well. like we're closed for the rest of the afternoon. The plot of this movie, God only knows. <laughs> they even called up Raymond Chandler during the making of this and they said, uh, who, who killed so-and-so? And he said, I don't know, I wrote it years ago, I couldn't tell you. <laughs> when you go back to the book, you can't figure it out. But in many of the great film noirs, there's holes you could drive through. The action is fast. There's a lot of terrific Warner Brothers character actors in this. Elijah Cook Jr., who played the gun soul uh, to Sidney Greenstreet in the Maltese Falcon, has a nice little bit towards the end of this movie in which he sort of breaks your heart and, and um, he, he dies for a girl that he loves. What's the matter, Jones? Ain't you ever seen a gun before? Where's the girl? Listen. You want me to count three or something like a movie? And... It gets to a point where they finally have this big shootout and um, a lot of people get shot, like every five minutes in this movie. Ah! 
and as I said, it doesn't really make a lot of sense, but it doesn't matter because it moves so quickly. It's got a score by Max Steiner. It's got a, all the Warner Brothers accoutrements that make a great, great film noir. Now, the interesting thing about this movie outside of the plot is that, or lack of, is that this movie was shot and then it wasn't released right away. And Bacall went and made a movie called Confidential Agent and it bombed. And suddenly Warner's realized that, oh my God, Hawks and Bogart had coached her through this whole performance and to have it have not, she really can't act. You know, we've sunk millions into this. Well, her agent, Charlie Feldman, was a wise old bird and he called her, called up Jack Ward. He said, look, this is what you're gonna do. You wanna save Bacall's career, you go back into to the big sleep and you reshoot scenes. And you put a scene in where they had that sexual banter back and forth and back and forth that got that, got that electricity into have and have not. And you're gonna have a major star on your hands and you're not going to have to worry. So they went, they held it up for a year and they went back into the studio and they finished, addition, they added additional scenes. Some people couldn't do these scenes so they replaced certain cast members. And they put in this one scene where Colin Bogart meet at a cocktail lounge and they have this banter back and forth and they're, and they're talking about each other but they're saying about racing horses. And You've got a touch of class but uh... I don't know how, how far you can go. A lot depends on who's in the saddle. Go ahead, Marla. I like the way you work. In case you don't know it, you're doing all right. <laughs> he goes, well, I'm good on the long stretches. You know, and it's this whole sexual banter back and forth in the, in the grand tradition of double indemnity. The movie was a humongous hit. And they got married, and they went on to make two more films together. The Dark Passage, which we did, and Title Queen at the Movies, and Key Largo, which we also did. And they were one of the great, great screen teams. And she couldn't have had a better teacher than Bogart because he was really, really careful with her, and so was Howard Hawks. And you are going to love Humphrey Bogart, Lauren Bacall, Dorothy Malone, Elijah Cook Jr., and Howard Hawks' is classic, The Big Sleep. Bogart at this time was married to an alcoholic uh, who was a little bit older than her. It was his third marriage. Her name was Mayo Metho, and they were known as the battling Bogarts. They were the type who threw bottles across the room, and you know, she he always had stitches and was in the hospital. They were having fist fights. He called her sluggy. The popcorn can't be beat. 